We're about to have a ton of fun here, making some cocktails and having a little brunch. There she is. Look at you. Look hey. at you. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Look at this. Madeline, Madeline and I are joining you right here. I like it. Yeah. I like it. I approve. These are great. Weather's good here. It's beautiful. It's sunny outside. How about in California? Oh, it's beautiful. You know, it's earlier here, so it's 9 a.m., so I'm about to have a little fruit salad for breakfast here. Nice. <laughs> fruit salad in a glass. Got to get, gotta get your fruit in. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, so good. So what kind of sangria do you have there? What's that? What kind of sangria is it? So um, I have a little bit of um, passion fruit. You know me and my passion fruits. Emily yeah. has a passion fruit tree, and whenever she comes into town, she <laughs> always brings me, if she has a couple extra, she always brings me passion fruit because you know that I love them. So a little bit of passion fruit, a little bit of simple syrup. Um, I added a little bit of Prosecco and, and a pinch of, uh, it's actually more of a spritz, um, and uh, a little bit of Campari. Awesome. And, and look, you know that the, the acidity in that uh, passion fruit, it, uh, it turns it orange versus the red. It was red, and then as soon as I put the passion fruit in. Wow. Took, oh, a little lemon. Mm. That a sounds little. delightful. I love it. Yeah. Cool, cool. So excited, so excited. Yeah. Well, you know, today I'm going to do a little summery sangria. Um, this is actually a flavor combination I really love. Um, like strawberries and basil to me is really magical. Um, and I love fresh herbs and cocktails. And so, um, you know, what, I'm, what I've got is a bunch of fresh strawberries I just picked up at the farmer's market. And uh, I'm going to slice these up. I'm going to do this with a little bit of a different sangria. And I know, like in the restaurant, I know that we use um, you make a mix where you dice up fruit and you have it sitting in sugar, right? Right. A little citrus, a little sugar. Yeah. I, I love what that does to fruit. You know, just macerating it, bringing out the flavors. Um, so, it's so cool. So what I'm going to do is just dice up these strawberries. And, you know, in, in sangria, you can do really big chunks. You can do little chunks. I like to do small enough that, like, as you're drinking, you can get a little bit of that fruit in your mouth as opposed to just having it as a garnish. You know, if you're using big lemon wheels in a sangria, it's more of a more of a garnish. Obviously, it's giving flavor too. But you know, everything I'm using in this sangria is something we're going to eat. So I want the I want the slices a little bit smaller, and then uh, take all those strawberries, and then I'm going to just sprinkle some sugar over the top, and uh, mix that in. And then what it's going to do is just pull out all of the juices in the strawberries and give us really great, intense, juicy flavor. And so, yeah, so you can see here through the magic of television and time, you can see over here, like I've got my strawberries covered in, in sugar. And I actually already did a batch about an hour ago. Check this out. So these guys, already macerating and you can see this it's almost like a syrup coming out of them it's pulling all this liquid out matt i'm sure you and your food science have better explanation for how that happens but i can see like in the bottom of the bowl a huge amount of liquid really cool stuff so it's almost like making a strawberry syrup out of fresh strawberries and then when i add this to the sangria it'll it'll just have that much more of an intense strawberry flavor to it which yep. i love um and then i've got my basil so i'm actually Basil kind of tricky in sangrias because, or just in general in drinks, if you're really careful with basil, because if it's too strong, it actually starts to taste more like licorice. And I want that really pretty perfumey aromatic without it being uh, too, too strong and too overpowering. So I'm just going to do a, like a, it's like a chiffonade, but I'm doing a little bit looser. So I just rolled up my leaves, slicing them into kind of big strips here and uh, save those. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is take a little bit of the lay. This is actually the lay rosé. So it's a pink lay. Um, lay is actually a vermouth. It comes from the Bordeaux region of France. It's made with wine and then they aromatize it with herbs and a lot of citrus and, uh, and then it's fortified. It's a little bit more alcohol. It's about as alcoholic as like a port or vermouth. It is actually technically a vermouth. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the lay to my berries as well. Um, and this will just, Add a little bit more flavor and complexity to it. Give those a good stir. And uh, now we get to the good part. <clears throat> oh, 
bottle of rosé. You can see there's a whole pink theme going on here this morning. And you know, with sangria, there really are no rules. You can, you can really use anything you want. You know, traditional sangria is, you know, originally sangria was red, just red wine and a bunch of fruit, lots of citrus. Um, you know, the, the rules really come down to making it taste good. And so you can start with a dry wine, a sweet wine. It's really kind of your matter of taste. If you'd like a sangria that's sweeter, add more sugar or start with a sweeter wine to begin with. Uh, you can use things like Riesling, the Burst Demeanor, make a delicious sangria. Um, the Burst Demeanor is so perfumey that you can really do some really interesting flavors with tropical fruit and sangria. And then you can use red wines. You can use really dark, powerful red wine to give you a punchier sangria. Um, today I'm using rosé just because. You know, our sangria at Cooper's Hawk is, um, we add fruit juices to it. So it's kind of giving you a pre-batch sangria flavor. It's great because you can just put it right over ice and you're good to go. Um, but if you want to go fancy, you make it at home like this. So I'm going to throw my basil in. And then finally, I've got some watermelon. Now the watermelon, if you're making a traditional sangria where you want to let things sit and macerate uh, in the wine for a period of time, Hold off on the watermelon, it'll get pretty mushy. I also say hold off on the basil, because that as well will start to give you too much of that licorice flavor. So big pieces of watermelon. It's not quite watermelon season, so this is not the ideal watermelon, I think, today, but uh, it still tastes good. I had a few bites of it as I was cutting it up. And you know, finally, once you've got all your fruit juice and everything in there, um, you can finish it off with bubbles. You, know, you can use things like lemon lime, uh, ginger ale. Uh, I'm actually, I'm going to use a little bit of La Croix today. Excuse me, one minute. Uh oh, where'd she uh -oh. go? All right, I'm back. <laughs> and um, so this is like lime flavor, and I like this because it, it gives a little bit of zest to it. You know, I don't have my citrus in here, and so instead I'm going to use it in the form of Put in ice. And we're good to go. And I'm gonna actually gonna chop off with that rather than putting it in the pitcher. I mean, look at that. That is Please. gorgeous, right? Oh, that. So get some of that fruit in there. Emily, I think you and I have the best jobs in the world. We, we, we get to eat and drink for a living and teach other people how to do it. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. We have awesome jobs. You know, we both of us just love flavors. We love, uh, we love showing people a good time. It's pretty awesome. We finish it off with a little spritz there. And you know, I love putting fresh herbs in drinks because they, it's like as you're drinking it, you can smell it. And actually, if you take your herbs and just slap it, it bruises it and releases some of the aroma. There we go. I'm going to put that on top. And so now when I go to drink, I'll be able to smell that basil. Mm -hmm. So good. It's pretty awesome. That is cool. awesome. Hey, let's open it up for some questions for Emily. Um, you know, anything sangria, anything wine, um, have a few questions come in and then uh, we'll uh, make some pretzel bread French toast. Emily awesome. rocks. We love Emily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> Emily's gorgeous. Emily's beautiful. Oh, my gosh. Look at all this. Oh, Emily. Gosh. Emily, yeah, your, your face is starting to look like your, uh, your blouse there. Emily, <laughs> what's your favorite... What is your favorite type of wine to put in sangria? Kind of depends on my mood. I, I personally, I like white sangrias because you can really taste the fruit a bit more. Um, I do like red sangria with things like blueberries and blackberries, but uh, I like how white wine gives you a little bit more of a, of a, of a base uh, for the flavors. Really simple white wines. Pinot Gris is fantastic. Things that are fruity, fresh. Oh, somebody's going to make this with rhubarb, Cooper's Hawk rhubarb. I love that idea. That is an excellent call. I have actually done this, a very similar drink to this with strawberries and basil and rhubarb wine. And um, it's fantastic. 
little bit of tonic in that too. It's pretty tasty. So we have someone who really likes rosemary. What fruit would you pair with rosemary? Oh boy, there's so many things. I would do rosemary with some darker berries. Careful with the rosemary because it's gonna have a strong flavor. Don't let that soak for too long. But I would do like blackberry and blueberry, black currants. Um, what do you think, Matt? Uh, I'm with you. I, I love both sangrias. I love reds and whites and love to add some fortified wines. I love port to add to red and, and with yeah. blackberries and, and uh, maybe some cassis. You know, go the French Wouldn't route. Be good grapefruit, like a grapefruit sangria with rosemary, oh. pretty tasty too. Absolutely. Yeah. What, what food pairs well with sangria? Everything. <laughs> I would agree there. I like you know tapas, you know, really nice salty things because there's a lot of fruit and some sweetness in sangria. So you know, foods with some saltiness are a really nice contrast, I think, with the sweetness of this. Um, I have only mango in the house. Oh, yes, please. What yeah. would work well with mango? With mango, again, I'd go with a, a you know, fruitier white wine, um, you know, Cooper's Hawk White, Pinot Gris. You could do Riesling. Um, that, then that's going to make a pretty awesome, awesome sangria, I think. Yeah. Yeah, someone, someone said, hey, what about nightjar sangria? Absolutely. Absolutely. For sure. That's Strong great... stuff, though, huh? Yeah. Do you ever add vodka? Why not? <laughs> you know, I didn't go very strong on the alcohol this morning because it's 9 a.m. in California. But, uh, but yeah, if you want to make this stronger, feel free to add vodka, gin. You can really kind of punch it up. A red wine sangria with a little bit of bourbon in it. It's pretty tasty, too. Here's one I love. Do you ever make a spicy sangria? What's that? Do you ever make a spicy sangria? Ah, yeah. You know what's really tasty is a uh, sangria with pineapple, and you put in some little like paper thin shavings of of uh, jalapeno. It's really good. Yeah, love it. Yeah. Just, so, just want to let everybody know that the recipes that we're doing today can be found um, on at chwinery.com forward slash Sunday Funday. Yay! <laughs> Well, hey, I think uh, we're going to start. Uh, I'm going to put the camera around. And I'm going to have my, uh, my camera crew here help me to, uh, to film. And we're going to start to talk about the uh, pretzel bread French toast. Cool? Everybody awesome. ready for that? Cool. I'm going to bring the camera closer so I can read along. OK. First, start with a sip of cocktail. So this actually started as a pretzel bread, bread pudding that we did in the restaurants and we just kind of modified it to do it as a, a breakfast French toast. So super simple. And um, this is kind of how we uh, start here. So we've got two loaves of the, uh, the pretzel bread. Um, we're gonna do four slices of what other other kind of bread here? Um, this happens to be brioche that we use in the restaurants. You can use challah. Um, and then uh, we have five eggs, five large eggs, which is about a cup of eggs. To that, we're going to add our vanilla bean paste. And you can use extract if that's what you have at home. And I've already heated up one cup of sugar with a, you can see there's a, um, a piece of, of uh, cinnamon stick there. And we're just going to, going to mix up those eggs and start to add the cream and sugar mixture here with the eggs. And you want to add a little bit just so that it doesn't curdle and then add about another third and then you can add the rest okay so continue to stir that really well to make sure that's all combined and then we're going to cut the cubes of bread in about one inch one inch size so again we have the two loaves hopefully everyone uh Got a little bit of pretzel bread from carry out this week. 
and you can cook along with us. So I have a nine by 13. This is where you have to go in your basement and dig out all those presents that you have from your weddings or your parents' weddings or your grandparents' weddings. This is an old, old school uh, Pyrex that I have here. So I've buttered it really well. And then just gonna layer that pretzel bread and the, the other bread in here. And nice and even here. And then I'm gonna make sure that, again, all the eggs have been mixed in really well. Oh, I forgot my, my salt. So about a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. You know, what's interesting in baking and in pastries, especially when working with chocolate, salt, we think of salt as, you know, making it salty. But that's not what salt does. Salt brings out natural flavors and things. I talk about that all the time. So especially with pastries, anything sweet, you always have to have a little bit of kosher salt just to balance everything out. I have to give a nod to my good friend, Ina. Ina Pinkney, the, the breakfast queen, she taught me so many things about uh, about cooking breakfast, and uh, she's one of my favorite people in the world. I always love to uh, talk about her whenever I'm doing anything with breakfast. So, so now what I like to do is is just uh, this looks like a lot of liquid, okay? But this is a casserole that really needs to soak up very, very well. Hey, Matt, there's a question. Uh, how do you know if a pinch is the right amount of salt? I say a pinch. The recipe calls for a quarter teaspoon. You know, I've got big hands, so my pinches are bigger than your pinches. <laughs> Might take a couple pinches from me. Right? So, but, but a quarter teaspoon. But I've been doing this a long time, so I know, I know how many pinches, uh, I know how many times I need to pinch the salt to get a quarter teaspoon, if you know what I mean. I hear you. So... Again, so this is warm, so this is gonna soak in fairly quickly, but we wanna let this sit for a good half hour before we put it in the oven, okay? You can also do this ahead of time, but you still would want to let it sit. And then you can put it in the refrigerator overnight. So right now what I'm gonna do is just gently push that down and about every 10 minutes, you're just gonna wanna push that down. Again, make sure you smell that from here. Oh, it's, this is so good. This is so crazy good. And there's so many different, you know, I, I make this differently every time. You know, if, if you wanna add some candied nuts to it, add, add some candied nuts. I like to add some orange peel sometimes, a little bit of nutmeg. Um, if you like more cinnamon, by all means. You know, I love the way you talk about sangria, and it's the same way I talk about food. Um, there's, I, I talk in terms of method and technique a lot, and once you learn method and technique, you can do anything. If you want to turn this into, um, you could make this, like press it really, really well, cook it, refrigerate it. You can cut pieces, add butter and a little bit of sugar, and actually cook it on a griddle and make like a crispy French toast as well. It's not wow. what we're doing today. But uh, like I said, there's just, there's so many things. Once you master one specific thing, that's where you start to put your spin on it, okay? So, Can you substitute almond milk for heavy cream in this? You know, I've never done it, but I don't see why not. Yeah, I, I think that would be fine. That's a great idea, actually. Coconut milk. Coconut oh, yeah, that'd be milk. delicious. We just made some, uh, some some tapioca, some coconut milk tapioca last night. And I just love coconut milk. I think coconut milk would be beautiful in here. You know, you might, you might need to make it a couple times. You might need to add a little bit more, a little bit less, but so that's pretty much how that goes. And then I've got a couple ounces of cream cheese here. And the thing that cream cheese does, let's say this has been sitting for, um, for about a half hour. And you just oh, take the cream man. cheese. Now it gets real. There we go. Now it's getting real. You just kind of push it in. It's almost like adding sausage to a pizza, you know? Yeah. But what happens, and I've got one literally that I just pulled out of the oven before we started to go live. And it is just, boy, it's calling her name over here. So, um, 
but you basically just kind of push these in and as it cooks these caramelize and get a little crispy on top and they get chewy and gooey and it just adds a little bit of extra richness um, if you don't want to use it that's totally fine to leave it out it's still going to be fantastic but uh, again just adds a little bit of richness to it okay so then what we're going to do is we cook this in what's called a water bath so i have a, a hotel pan here but uh, you know any kind of baking pan so as long as you can get about you know about halfway up this is about maybe half to three quarters inch of water hot water i was boiling hot water before it goes in the oven and this bakes covered with tin foil this bakes for about an hour i usually take the tin foil off about halfway to let it start to brown and um you know depending on your oven you may need a few more minutes in the oven but now the magic happens now i'm going to show you what this looks like when it's done Hey, Matt, what happens if you just bake it in the oven without putting it in the water bath? What can happen is it can, it can start to burn around the edges a little bit. It really depends on how thick the material is. This one I made in a, um, in a corningware dish this morning. So it's, everything's the same. As you can see, it's just a little bit, a little bit deeper. So this one took maybe another 10 to 15 minutes to bake. And but what like, temperature are you doing it at? Pardon me? What temperature? 400. Okay. 400. So the other thing that the water does is it, it keeps the cavity uh, steamed, you know, so it's very hard to overcook this in, in the oven. Okay. But as you can see, see, they almost look like toasted marshmallows on top. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So now what I'm going to do, and, and Emily, it was so cool. I almost wanted to grab my bowl. So look what I made. I did the exact same thing you did. Hey. So sugar. Except I added a little bit of Grand Marnier to mine. Hello. Love it. And uh, so as Emily was saying, what it does, and I actually add a little bit of flaky sea salt to mine too, just a little bit. So what sugar and salt do is they pull the liquid out and it thickens with the sugar, okay? So you get this natural sugar added just a pinch of fresh squeezed lemon juice, which enhances strawberries and blackberries, okay? So you've got this on the side. And then I also have... I like to talk about uh, my little presents here. So my mother-in-law gave me this. So a little bit of, uh, let me just look at that, like snow. So here's where the fun starts. You know, you can use, you know, you can be simple and just, you know, scoop it out and put a little bit of um, like butter and syrup on it, powdered sugar. We've got the fresh berries. If you like you know, one of the other things I love is just some sautéed apples with butter and cinnamon that go over the top, which is, which is really nice. And, uh, you know, sky's the limit. And, and what you want, a little bit of jam, fresh jam, you know, pretty much whatever you'd love to, whatever you like to put on your French toast, okay? Um, so that's it. Pretzel bread, French toast, you know. Um, you, could use, you could use 100% uh, pretzel bread. It gets a little chewy because it, it's there's a, it's a pretty tough bread, um, and uh, you know if you want to eliminate it and just use regular bread, that's that's fine too. But uh, um, I like the combination of the different breads, you know. So. So how long do you think this should cook, depending on your pan size? Like if you have a nine by twelve pan, how long would that cook? Like, is there a way to feel, like, should you feel it, or is that the... So, you see this color here. Yeah. You no, know it's done. It's all golden. When you've got a beautiful brown, it starts to souffle a little bit. Um, you could, an hour is a rough estimate, but the other thing you can do, too, is if you have a thermometer, and put the thermometer in the center. Once you get to 165, you're golden. What happens at 165, cool. technically all bacteria is killed, but more importantly... Um, the eggs and the cream activate to form that custard, which basically yeah. holds it together really, really well. So um, let's open it up to questions. Anybody have any questions? I've got to get my cocktail back. Well, some people want to see what it looks like inside. Can you can you put it on a plate? Oh, heck yeah. Hold on a second. Let me, uh, I'll be right back.
And we're going to have directions for all of this will be on uh, chwinery.com slash Sunday Funday. Check it out. We'll add in any additional instructions. I know we have got the ingredients on the website now, but instructions will be added. I'm going to, I'm going to try to take this out. Like hopefully it's rested long enough. I'm going to try to take this out like a piece of pie here. Let's see how well I do. Let me grab a spoon. Oh boy. Oh, look at the love. Oh my God, look at, look at that. Grandma, we got grandma love going on here. Yeah. So. <laughs> I think so, we should, so you said um, about pressing it and grilling it. So what would you do? Do you let it get totally cold before slicing so it? So what I would do, yeah. So what I would do with this is uh, the other one, the other pan, I think might be a little bit better because you can get nice, um, nice cuts out of it. But basically let it refrigerate and take soft butter and kind of butter it like toast or like a grilled cheese and then yeah. dip it in sugar, okay? And then put that down on the griddle, and that'll start to caramelize. And, and maybe two minutes there, just flip it over, and you'll you can touch it. You'll see a beautiful caramel, almost like creme brulee. Okay. It's very similar to what we do. If you've ever had the um, uh, the banana bread sundae, yeah, at Cooper's Talk. So we make banana bread loaves. We cool them. We cut them. Soft butter, dip in sugar, and then on the griddle just to make that beautiful caramelization. And then mm -hmm. ice cream, caramel sauce, rum caramel sauce, caramelized bananas. Oh man, you're killing I'm me. for some of that right now. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Wow. This Delicious. is uh, That looks this so is amazing. Beautiful. I cannot and wait You can see it, how it's just soaked all the way through. You know? Yeah. And then uh, beautiful. Uh, I love it with just the fresh fruit. Um, but it's, uh, it's so delicious. It's so delicious. You know, Emily, I had to do a little extra credit today. I'm sorry. I had, uh, you know, I had some, uh, some leftover hard boiled eggs. So, uh, I made these during the week. And so I whipped up a couple more this morning. Uh, you know, it's, it's brunch and brunch is not brunch without some eggs too. Right. So, yeah. uh, these are those, uh, those, Baked deviled eggs, Mornay, with a little bit of spinach and chopped. Uh, yeah, Had a, you know. I think you texted me a picture of that this week, man. Yeah, that looks we did amazing. a little Instagram live with uh, with some folks and uh, did that one too. So maybe we'll save that one for another day. But uh, that yeah. is that's that's some good eating right there. So what else? Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, lots of lots of people saying that looks really good. Um, oh, just can you repeat what you added to the fresh berries? Is you said sugar, a little bit of salt, and some romaine. So again, I don't use any recipes whatsoever. Um, but I start with cutting up the berries, even the blackberries. If you see, I cut the black some of the blackberries open to expose some more of the flesh. Yeah. That'll pull out some of the. They look pretty, and it pulls out some of the some of the liquid. Um, so just a little squeeze of lemon. Um, and uh, maybe two tablespoons of sugar to start. Um, a splash of Grand Marnier, maybe a tablespoon of Grand Marnier. And then um, I actually did a mixture of powdered sugar because powdered sugar obviously is, is drier than regular granulated sugar. So it, it helps to thicken a little bit. So the other thing you can do too, is you can kind of smash up some of the raspberries. Uh, I've done that before and almost make like a raspberry sauce. So maybe like eight or 10 of the raspberries, I'll smash up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then I let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes. I taste it, it needs a little bit more sugar. I add a little bit more sugar. You know, obviously in the restaurants, awesome. we have pretty specific set recipes that we teach everyone to, to yeah. use, but you know, at home, um, no, just, I don't use a lot of recipes. I love it. I love but it. Super love simple. It. Super great. simple. You know, great for a beautiful sunny Sunday brunch. Absolutely. In Emily, California. A little bread pudding, a little strawberry, yeah. watermelon, basil, sangria. It's uh, it. it's good to be us. It it is it is, and we're uh, we're incredibly thankful and uh, humbled that uh, everyone is joining us today and. 
Um, hopefully you're enjoying all the uh, social media things that Emily and I have been putting out there. We've got a, a great lineup of some fun things to come over the next few yes. weeks. So continue to tune in on both Facebook Live and Instagram Live. Um, what else we got out there? Any, any other questions for us? Before we Lots of people really excited about this. Uh, oh, do you heat the cream to boiling? So you don't need to boil it. It's really about warming it just so it's not cold. When it's warm, it helps to soak into the bread a little bit better. But you don't need to bring it to a boil, you know. But the one thing you want to make sure you do is when you add the sugar, immediately stir it, you know. Back in my younger days, when I would do things like that and add the sugar to cream or, or even water if I'm making caramel, if you don't mix it really quick and dilute the sugar into the liquid, sometimes it can start to caramelize on the bottom, okay? So you want to make sure when you yeah. add the sugar, use a whisk, make sure you dissolve that sugar right away, and then just give it a stir every now and then. But keep it low because if you don't keep an eye on it, it can foam up and, and boil over and you lose some of your cream. So you don't want to do that. Perfect. Yeah. Well, we're going to do this again. I think the next one, uh, well, the next live event's going to be on the 7th. I'll be talking about, uh, I'll be doing a little flight of wines. In fact, I think that's the one where I'm talking about Mother's Day wines. So that'll be fun. Yeah. So we'll, we'll publish the list of wines and uh, anybody can taste along with me as I talk about them, ask questions. We'll have some fun. We'll share some wine virtually. Awesome. Love it. Yeah. Thanks again for joining us today. We'll see you soon. Cheers. Cheers.